are here waiting. So I told them it's worth the wait. It's so nice to see so many people on this live. I know. How great is that? Hello, everybody. Yes. And we did turn off commenting. So sorry, because we just don't want to distract from the conversation. And we got so many good community questions. Yes. Um, so we're just going to go with it. And of course, can always answer questions after. And definitely follow along if anyone wants to learn more about Prima, follow us, um, because I'm sure there's a lot of Jessica Capshaw fans in this conversation. This um, but anyways, I'm so excited to be talking to you both because it's so interesting. You know, most people, even in this chat, in this um, IG Live, they know of you professionally, right? Christopher is an entrepreneur. Jessica is an actor, among other things. But what people don't know is that you're also devoted parents of four and husband and wife and so I'd love for this to be kind of a peek inside your world and your life um, as devoted family people just talking about how you manage because it's a lot for two people yeah <laughs> I, 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 well the first thing is you can't think that it's a lot you can't start right that's well that's this goes into the wellness half so yes exactly yeah. But I mean, it is a lot to have four kids to both be professionals. And so I'd love to just get started with, you know, generally, how do you two manage? How do you manage stress? It's the holiday season right now. Jessica, you've already touched on kind of just mindset, but would love to learn a little bit more about how you both manage just the stress of life. The stress of life. Well, that was so many questions in, in one. <laughs> in one. Um, but I... Um, Oh, well, let's go with mindset first, right? Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very devoted, speaking of devoted, um, of life in general. Um, I'm not, I don't skew towards thinking that I know what I don't know yet. I always like to say I know what I don't know yet or what I haven't learned. So I'm pretty patient in terms of um, having my mindset be, just take your next best step. Hmm. 75 steps down the road. What happens to me, honey? <laughs> it's not good. Not good yeah. I get overwhelmed. Um, and that's probably the closest that I feel to stress. Um, so I really, really do just sort of, it's, it's not necessarily that my aperture is closed. It's just focused on whatever my next thing. Is. Um, and it also, the mind, that mindset helps me be more present for what is next so that I can, so that I can do my best moment and then I can also safeguard myself although you know, completely safeguard yourself from in the future saying I wasn't I wasn't present or I can see why it went you know wonky because I wasn't really there I was thinking about what's you know five minutes ahead or whatever so I think that it's my presence um and I think I try I've developed you know quite a few ways of keeping myself away from meltdown you know it's like mm -hmm. if you on the vibrant and busy, but overwhelmed and in total down, I think that that's pretty key. And I would say that I am learning a ton about, um, about right now. That's top of mind. You know, Christopher and I being sort of, you know, in our home life, being that, putting ourselves and behaving with, you know, respect and integrity yeah. and, and doing everything that we can for each other, um, mostly, but then obviously for our world, because we have four little people that are looking at us for what Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's very admirable. Christopher, do you have anything to add in terms of how mindset plays into your self-care? Well, you you know me very well in the sense that I'm, I, I have a lot on my plate, on my plate in my professional world, and it's just as robust, if not to react that in my in my family world, and so when I arrive into that um, role and function, I have to be present and focused, and really focus on the quality of the experience. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of the mindset work and practice work and ritual work that I do is about intention setting and getting hold of my day at its at its start. So as Jessica can attest, I wake up and I walk out of the room, out of the house, like into a very small space where I can really- First he says good morning. I say good morning. <laughs> if you're awake. He walks out of the but room. But if you're awake, I'm <laughs> out of here. Yep. 
wake up, see ya. No, but I, it, it, it is about doing that, that ritualistic work around intention and physical practice and just feeling as if that is, there's a lot of intentionality around what I believe to be um, my day um, and how, not, not looking at my schedule, not looking at my phone, but really just doing my own inner work. Uh, I, I feel like that is how I best show up for all the facets because you can't prioritize. There's a lot of, sadly, based on amount of choice and optionality, there's a lot of compromise. But when you are choosing certain things or prioritizing certain things over others, you, when you show up, you have to be your best and most whole self. Yep. That's something that I think you both are saying is just living with that intention mindset, not kind of passively moving through your tasks. And that yep. allows you to be present when you do show up. So I do feel like that's something that's very similar between the two of you. When you're at work, you're intentionally there. When you're with your family, you're intentionally putting that aside and thinking about just the small steps ahead so you don't get overwhelmed, but you, so you can really show up. So that's very admirable, I would say. You know, but to add on to that, I think that that's a word that comes up a lot for people in general and people who are in work, who are people who are parenting um, in relationship is that idea of compromise. And I could be fooling myself, but I have, I have recently been looking at it from a different angle, which is... I, I can't be everything all the time, right? Like any given day, I might be a far better partner, a far better m mother, a far better actress, a far better, I don't know, organizer, whatever that is. And I might really stink at something else. Yeah. But I compromised what mm -hmm. I've done well in order to be good at what, I, what I've succeeded at as much as I've sort of lived in balance. I can't, I can't be created everything all the time, no matter how much I want to. And, and any of my earlier and younger efforts to do that left me sort of feeling like I tried to do everything well and I did nothing well. Um, mm -hmm. and so yeah. I think that I think a lot more about balance than compromise. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it, 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 that definitely helps me, I think. I agree. And that's actually something that Christopher taught me very early on. You know, we can't be everything to everyone. So you have to choose where you put your energy and relationship with intention. Like if you think about all of the things you are, wife, mother, professional, friend, sister, you know, daughter, choose two or three. And because we have this idea that we have to be every single thing to everyone, but that's not possible and it's overwhelming. So I, I love that. I, I really feel like that's a life philosophy you two definitely embody. So, um, but anyways, let's move on to some other questions. Do you, can you each share something about yourself that everyone watching would find surprising? You know, something that's not on your Wikipedia page, something that is unique that we don't really know about. Cause I know a lot of people, you know, Everybody knows. Athlete, most people don't know that. Like this is a time to kind of share that unique thing about yourself. Um, I, I, I will pull from the world of a uh, deep, the, how I keep myself safe and how I keep myself mentally and physically organized is having very, we share this and I think we wouldn't be able to be a couple if we didn't share this, is this idea that things need to be neat and tidy and minimalistic and organized, that's what she said, organized, to, to a place where when I visually look, I feel that my stuff is in place and Do I you think, think people are going to be surprised about this. <laughs> I know. I don't think that's surprising if they know your design aesthetic or the minimal. <laughs> not well, you, but I guess like how much set and setting matters, right? Yeah. Environment matters. <laughs> What'd you say? It's really about set and setting, right? Like the environment matters. And uh, it's kind of like it enables you to be your best self. Yes. Okay. Uh, we all know I'm a control enthusiast. <laughs> And so that comes across. I, I think people sometimes don't look at like, what's your sock drawer look like? Mm. <laughs> you're, wait, you're opening up in the morning, you're putting your socks on, if that's a mess, like, are you a mess? Some people operate better in mess. I'm shocked by that. I mean, can you imagine if I was, if we really didn't see eye to eye on that? I, oh, I'm, oh no, I gotta check my sock drawer because if Christopher comes over, he's gonna judge it. <laughs> That's what, a good one. What about you, Jessica? Or any like interesting, 
you know, talent that we don't know about or anything from your past? Oh my God. I'm telling you, you, I've been asked this question before and it's really, <laughs> I feel like I've just laid it all out. I, don't know. I was hoping Christopher would talk a little bit about frisbee, frisbee golf, but. We're not, we're not going to say that. Did you think of a surprising thing? A surprising thing. Um, what do people not know about me? We should ask that, we ch you should have asked oh, the other one. Been good. Next oh, yeah. Well, Christopher, why don't you answer for her? Because she can't think of anything. I, I so in in a world where you do so many things really well, this is good. No, um, when I think you 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 said it well. When you go into something, you go all in. So work, mm -hmm. I'm so hyper and and uh, attentive and intense and focused and clear and passionate. You get really wrapped up in things, and I think that's a that's an admirable quality that. You, to the point of prioritization and focus, sometimes you just need to jump in and then that will appear or you're just gonna create your own little world. And I think you do that really well. You, When you're a mom, you are 100% plus a mom. And when you are reading a book or when you are <laughs> working out. <laughs> Not or, enough, these you know, all in. I, that's such a good quality. It is, it's a really good quality because I think people like, dilly dally and they're not anything really angular in a world that's where you have to be such a good one and speaking of kids would love to hear if you've learned anything from your kids lately you know what i love about your four kids is i've gotten the privilege to get to know getting got to know them but you know they all kind of represent different facets of each of, of both of you and so i'd love to to hear if you've learned anything unique you know kids have the best wisdom from your kids lately yeah, yeah, they're, they're so great. Um, I think it's daily, I and mean, truly daily that you, um, you see, a, you see a perspective that you didn't see before, or was so long ago, mm. that we tap into it. Um, I think that we, uh, as a theme have learned the most from them and have put words to it. Um, not, not even so recently, but for the past, you know, couple of years is just how much, how well they teach us to play. Mm. We talk about all the things that we were talking about and they're all about optimization. And I mean, yeah, when you're down. focused and, and how to, you know, not be stressed and all of that's in reaction to stressors, right? I mean, you're, 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 you're trying to get ahead of and be intentional so that you're not being reactive um, and you're able to be a little more nimble and responsive. Like I'm hearing that I'm not freaking out. I'm going to, take a minute, I'm going to process that, and then I'm going to respond. And kids obviously don't have that yet. Um, and yet they have this ability to play that we don't have, because we're so, because we're different. And I think it's um, always a wonderful thing when I see them deeply engaged in play or when they are playful. Um, and then also seeing in my own self how often I will catch myself about to say basically like stop playing and yeah like, i want you to do yeah. or stop being sure silly um i mean he christopher and eve were in bed last night and i was putting the other two girls to bed and they were laughing so hard and eve has the best laugh and she's dying laughing and i can hear her through the walls and like, oh, just trying to put these two girls to bed and how are they going to go to bed if they're listening to you laugh and i like went i put my handle a hand on the handle to open up the door and i was and i really was going to go in there like not not mean i'm not mean i was, was going to go in there and be like yeah. guys you need to be quiet and i went in and i was like love the sound of your laugh so much <laughs> more yeah. gotta sandwich it sandwich it between the two positives stop <laughs> laughing <laughs> Yeah. That's so sweet. Okay. That's a good example of exactly what you're saying. Answer this one. They teach you us to slow down. Mm. The day of life happens and you just sometimes you just gotta slow down. And the other one you I heard you say the other day, and I'm constantly reminded along with your play, is that in, you have to sometimes inject enthusiasm. And, and, I'm and, good at that and, one. You, and, and really just you have to take the energy inside of you and push it out of your body in a joyful, happy manner. And mm -hmm. it's not about choosing happiness as much as you have to go hard with your energy exchange and, and, and how you show up is a very, very uh, an, an energetic being. And I think that, that that is 
intentional and that takes work and that sometimes you've got to deep, dig down deep but our kids show us that all the time like they're especially a, a, a one in particular the, the amount of energy that flows out of her body probably yeah. is very very like that is somewhat performative but somewhat you mm -hmm. want to have people feel what she's feeling and that is a superpower and a incredible magic that she has wow so well said so well said it's funny because you were making a gesture christopher a few minutes ago and i was like whoa i totally see poppy there so it's just such a beautiful thing they're all such deep expressions of both of you but also and then some oh. um and jessica would love to hear and obviously want to hear from both of you but i already heard a little bit of this from christopher what's something in christopher that you admire a quality, something he does, something he reminds you to do? There's so many things. There's so many things. Um, and when you're talking about watching your kids and what you learn from your kids, I think that there's um, a deep part of our connection based in learning from each other mm. um, and, and being open to that lesson. Uh, and not in a, you know, in, in only the best way. Learn. Mm -hmm. Um, I, well, I'll, the one that comes to mind right away is one that is, uh, <clears throat> I am less skilled at, <clears throat> but in different ways. I still, I have a little bit, he's, I, I am, I admire his discipline. He yeah. has an incredible amount of discipline when he sets his mind to something. It is, and I mean, um, like in between his ears, like, you know, a, a, a goal an intention, whatever, or physically, um, you know, just, just really being able to, to do what he needs to do to get something done and not stopping until he's done. Um, which I think, you know, off of that comes commitment and integrity. And um, I think that he often sometimes, this irritates me as well, but he only, he really only wants the best. He only wants to do it the best way. He doesn't want to do it another way. Less, sometimes it's good enough. And I always say that sometimes good enough is okay. Nope, not in his book. But <laughs> no, no, I'm actually happy that it's never good enough because for business, that's actually a really good thing. But only imagine how it comes to life in other ways, especially anyone who's buying Prima benefits from that. And I'm not yeah. saying you're on a Prima live. I will tell you right now that um, if I always say, if anyone, if you lit through all of Christopher's um, endeavors and all of his positions of leadership and business and starting businesses and everything else, I would tell you that I'd buy any of his products a million times over anyone else's because I know how much work has gone into them. And I know that he will not settle for anything less than what he thinks is amazing. He has a deep responsibility. He feels that with every single thing that he creates. Um, again, sometimes irritating <laughs> i know what do you do for dinner when he's on a five day intermittent fast <laughs> that's my question <laughs> best of the best winner mentality but i will say it's such a joy and a privilege to have that mentality across the business because first of all it's con contagious but also what you said you know that obsessive nature, that's why our products are so good. That's why we will never settle for less than the best of ingredients, packaging, experience, scent, you know, it's that nature and that force of nature that makes us so great, so. Well, I, I appreciate you both saying that. I, I, I do it deeply out of a, a, a out of service mentality. Mm -hmm. Caretake, I wanna uplift, I wanna hold tight, I wanna protect people and and once I know I can't unknow things, yep. I get overly dogmatic and somewhat uncompromising and unyielding and unapologetic and I'm sorry. Nope, don't be <laughs> unapologetic. I'm sorry, that's yeah. more. I am sorry to the teammates uh, on our <laughs> team sometimes. No way, no way, exactly. It's, it's uh, I mean, you recently self, like just discipline is actually the highest form of self love because at its core, it's knowing what's possible and not settling for less. So I actually see it as a major strength. And I think it's a form of self love and self care. And also you put that same intention and that same attention and energy, I would say into your relationship, because, you know, part of self care is actually caring for your relationship. And I'm sure it's changed through, through the years with child, you know, childbirth, parenthood, 
building multi-million, billion dollar companies, being in, you know, a show for over 10 years. So would love to know what are, how do you guys prioritize your own relationship in the midst of all of this noise and chaos and stress? Do you have any sort of advice there? I mean, I'll, I'll jump in first with this one. This, this year, this past, I, I can't even understand how long it's been going on, <laughs> almost two years, has been really hard for everyone, um, personally, professionally, but uh, it, with, with social connection and with those you love the most, it's been triage. It's been, yeah. it's been hard. And so it, that's certainly hit us in a, a myriad of ways. Every uh, and every couple, and you're, you're fooling yourself if it hasn't, or, and or you're not paying attention. So, um, and, I, and I think we are doing a, a better job, a good job, uh, a more improved job. Sometimes it's good enough. Good yeah. Just to, to words to it, to say, to voice our struggle, to try to um, admit when we're going silent or disassociative and and that's not easy to say, I, I'm in need or I'm in pain or my silent thoughts are this. Um, and I think we're doing a better job at that and, and of prioritizing. In fact, you just emailed me today saying, hey, remember, we have this next week. Mm -hmm. um, and that spending those committed hours, even if you have to schedule it and put it on the calendar is incredibly important. So I, and again, I just wanna- um, Back to intention, I just- yeah. I feel like but, that's your word right now so and the balance of it because sometimes you're going to do better at it than other days you know oh. and and sort of like and, and notice where it hits you in your body where you feel when you feel like you're not doing it well what where does it hit you and and then you know i'm i i'm a little more i'm a little i'm a little i i proceed with caution i'm not a like rapid fire um person i sort of like to know what I'm doing again, take my next best step. Um, I don't hurry towards the last step. Um, unless I really don't want to do it. And then I, just do it. <laughs> um, I think it's the balance of that. And I think that it, yeah, for me, sometimes I can like, it's, it's just, it's, listen, life is a lot for everyone. And I think that um, one of the greatest lessons I've also learned or been had my attention put back on is, is how, you know, how, 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 very often we take things personally and how we actually should never take things personally that you know everyone if you actually assume positive intent and that everyone's doing their best you can actually lead with vulnerability and in a moment of not understanding you can say um hi i don't understand that. Hmm. we got into something the other day and i <laughs> can i just point out that i was 50 percent better at it than i was the last time. Sure. <laughs> and i I would just really like to get points for being 50% better. Yeah. Right. So, right. So. You're amazing. You, you, and you voiced it. And yes. Yeah. But that's the thing that I think is so important yeah. is that you're not going to even progress. We're moving in the direction. Progress yeah. perfection. Yeah. 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 But, you know, that's hard from a winner mentality sometimes. But Jessica, one thing that has really stuck with me since I interviewed you before Prima even launched for the Prima magazine. We did a magazine interview. And one thing that you said that has really, really stuck with me is just honoring the transitions. Because in life, we're moving so fast. You know, you finish your work, especially when we're working from home. Then we go right into the kitchen with our children, you know, our families. And a lot of us don't even realize that it's so important to take the time to honor the space between, the time between <clears throat> our or what you're doing. Can you yeah. talk about that and, you know, your, your mindset around transitions? Because I think that's so interesting and important. I mean, I, I, I stand on the shoulders of those who I feel lucky enough to have been, you know, in counsel with or hear from, talk to. But transitions are hugely important because... I am in, again, deep relationship and have so many people that I love that come in super hot. Yeah. You feel the whole room like, and I, and I always, you know, the, the, the lesson or the, the, the way that I want to be in, in response to that is not, um, you know, to, to go, you know, whoa, you're coming in so hot, like not to point it out, but to just be, um, 
be present and be honest when, you know, hey, we're doing this and this is, this is, can we like, you know, I don't know. And, or, or preemptively knowing that that might be how it goes. And so saying, you know, let's, you know, let's pick a different environment to come into. If you know, you're coming to me, can, we now have two minute, we don't even have two minute commutes, right? Like how, right. Three, your home office to go into your kitchen. Um, and, and, and we no longer have the same kind of transitions that we had before. So it's harder. And I think yeah. you have to put more, more attention on it in order to, um, and I think it's also, you know, I mean, I know that we all talk a lot about self-care and self-love, but so often I think the messages that we hear from the people that we love about how they feel is actually really could be a mirror, could be an understanding of the reflection of how we're feeling because we're bringing in that energy or whatever. So part of the self-love and self-care is actually stopping to take a minute to see what you're giving off in any given moment because you, because you choose, right? You choose happiness. You choose like, so injecting through the injecting mm -hmm. exactly thank you so much for sharing i want to get to community questions because we literally have like 50 of them let's People. fire them let's, let's wrap yeah let's rapid fire okay, what, um, what are some of your favorite activities to do as a family hike i was gonna say that oh perfect I um, bake, eat, cook um ping pong ping pong mm. Uh, watch TV, not TV, but walks. like watch movies. Walks. Yeah. Family walks. Walks. Um, what do you do to stay grounded during COVID? Any? <laughs> <laughs> Is that even possible? I don't know. <laughs> Eat better. Yeah. Make, make, make food. Um, how do you stay healthy while traveling? Oh, I think you pack your own snacks. And, and bring a lot of, bring a water bottle so you can fill up with water. Great, great, great. What are some of your favorite supplements? Oh, gosh. Oh, I've got my daily. daily. Um, daily. Let's talk about the daily for a second. Daily. I do the daily and the sleep tight. So, and sometimes I'll do no worries instead of the daily. But um, I'm a big fan of, especially uh, in the winter months, um, making sure that you have your vitamin D and vitamin C. Mm. Whenever we have, we, I mean, with the kids back in school, we actually have, you know, we had a cold that seemed to run through our house for 19 months, even though oh. that we were living through. Um, and it felt like there's a lot of lysine being handed around. Lysine, <laughs> yeah. vitamin. Sambucas. Uh, yeah. 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 How does the daily make both of you feel? Like, why do you take the daily? And Jessica, when do you take it? Do you take it in the morning? The daily, by the way, is Prima's bestseller. It's a vegan soft gel. And it's your daily dose of CBD that the body can absorb, which in turn helps stress, mood, sleep, immunity, so many benefits. So can we talk about the daily for just one minute? Yes. My best example would be to say that um, Christopher's always, uh, whenever he's developing a new product, sometimes without my knowledge, literally just like out of nowhere, he's like rubbing something on, uh, sticking something in my nose and saying, how's the smell? Yeah developing the daily and I don't think it had come out yet and I was actually going to do a movie and obviously whenever I go away I'm and I am a thinker and uh, that can sometimes make me a worrier and um and so I can all of a sudden have this really active imagination and be worrying about things or you know thinking about things I don't normally think about and he'd given it to me and I started taking it maybe three days before I left and then I just put it in my little you know daily supplement thing and I was taking it, I was taking it and I was like two weeks into um this movie and he said you said something about it and I was like oh, I I just haven't been as worried ah I like my normal I mean I can get dark worries too like worries that are not Yuck. good and I just didn't feel them it's as much or they were easier true. to sort of push away and be like that's not that's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. so that's yep. how it felt for me, how it feels yep. for me. Yeah, I, I take it in the morning. Um, it is the first thing I would like water and my two to three dailies. It is. Can you it, tell he's all about water? It, it grounds me, it clarifies me, it align. It, it like gives me the best me. I show up in yep. myself, I feel like. Exactly. It feels less tense, less, uh, I don't run anxious. I, I run a, a bit more uh, high velocity, high, um, 
uh, what's the word I'm like, I'm vi highly vigilant. And so mm. it knocks that down a little bit. So it knocks the peaks and valleys off. Yep. You know, that's what we hear a lot is with the daily because the endocannabinoid system, which is what it's supporting is just so pervasive. It's connected to every function and system of the body. Sometimes people realize what they don't feel. So I love what you said, Jessica. And oh, wait a second. I actually haven't been plagued by stress or anxious thoughts as much. Yep. I'm freer and feeling more whole and more like myself. And just for anyone who would be interested in trying it, you get a month supply in a jar and we have a very special discount code called Jessica 20 cool. that you add during checkout for 20% off if anyone wants to try, just saying it'll change your life. But um, yeah, one of many supplements to put in your well-being toolbox. Really, really important. Let's see what else we got from the community. Um, what is your biggest achievement this year? Wow. Um, Surviving, no. I, um, growth. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think change management. <laughs> yeah, he just made growth. <laughs> yeah, exactly, very similar. And then um, we're the world of change is it, we're all it's always upon us and i think as we become more fluid and accepting of the, the, the whole radical acceptance of hey, it's happening things will always be in flux They're, you're never settled so it the more nimble mm -hmm. and light and less entrenched the mm -hmm. i feel like we are getting but especially with family especially with growth especially with kids especially with like life and um this un in stable um, world right now. Yeah, uh, because I think that in, in so many ways, um, what, what the pandemic, <clears throat> what the pandemic introduced was, you don't get to know everything. You don't know everything, you don't, I mean, we all know we don't know anything, but we, there was a real moment where we actually, there was really, you don't know anything, and what you don't know was really scary, yeah. and, um, and affecting people in, in horrible, and permanent ways and so um the 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 alignment that you had to go through was so deep that then when you know when i always say like you're the some there's those days where sometimes you're, <laughs> you're sometimes in the windshield sometimes you're the bug give me your airpod case. keep pausing <laughs> and um I think that the moments where I felt like I was the bug used to set me back far more than they do now. And now yeah. when you spill coffee on yourself, when the car doesn't start, when you hit the thing and the parking spot, like whenever all the things happen, um, you just take a breath and you kind of know you're going to be okay. Yeah, exactly. I think that mindset too, it's almost like taking the long-term view and that's how we approach business too. And I know Christopher thinks that way. I mean, it's just, it's sustainable growth, right? And that's what I really respect and admire about your relationship and everything you've said and shared is that it's not about, you know, the mistakes during the day. It's about having this long-term view that we will get through it. And even if it's not this year, it's next year. I think just that commitment that you have to long-term growth and happiness is very, very ad admirable. Also, yeah. yeah. And it sometimes can be about the mistakes because sometimes yeah. it's gold, right? It's, yeah. Oh, I really don't I'm, want to make that mistake I'm, again. But how many times one of the things that we've said to our kids and remind them is that mistakes are good. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are reflective of effort. Mm -hmm. and an opportunity, yes, you should learn from your mistakes, and that's constantly said. When mistakes are an opportunity, they're building blocks. They're not weights on the shoulders. They're really building blocks you get to stand on top of with a better point of view and a, 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 a an opportunity to recommit to that, not making that mistake again. And I think that's just gold. So we're like, when you, kids make mistakes. I love mistakes. mistakes are when you're a parent, you, I swear you listen for them harder. You hear them more often, but sayings are everything. Mm. Like if you're not, if you're not making a mistake, you're not trying. Yeah. And 
love in terms of the long term. It's like, I remember this one hit me. It's the hardest. I say it all the time. It's just, everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Yeah, like, I love that saying. You, it's just, it's all happening. It's all in in process. And, and I think that, you know, another one that we lean hard on is that ruptures and relationship yeah. um, errors are inevitable. Mm -hmm. they, it is actually, guess what? to whoever smarty pants is listening. You don't get it. You don't get to die. You will absolutely make mistakes. You will hurt someone's feelings when you don't even mean to. You'll hurt yeah. someone's feelings when you mean to. I mean, you, you will fail, you will fall, you will do all those things, but it is really how you fix it, how you correct it, how you um, set an intention to repair. What, what's Stan Fred saying? Oh, that being, I, don't, I would have to paraphrase, but basically like when you fuck up, it's, it's a feature of being human. It's not a bug. Yeah. Right. You're, you're not, you're not, something's not wrong with you. It's just mm -hmm. inevitable in the human condition. Yeah. And it's also a learning opportunity because I think it's part of the human experience to learn what we want through what we don't want. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want that. You know, that was a mistake. So now I know exactly what to do next. It's kind of like learn by doing what you don't want in a way. Yeah. Um, Kind of interesting so i really i think that's really great this one oh, jessica were you gonna say one, one, one more thing no, say it's gonna happen a lot i think it's just i just don't think that you get to learn the lesson and have it be you know over yet yeah. and again yeah. to the point of me being like i was 50 percent better it's i i don't trust people who keep making the same mistake especially when it hurts my heart um those people i tend to move away from exactly that's yeah. not unintentional but aside an interesting question you know you have to have such resilience as an actor um and you have to almost not be scared of rejection how have you dealt with it? like how have you dealt with just this like resilience that you need to even be in this industry i mean all the i mean refer back to every single thing we've said yeah, yeah. you know um i think i think life is hard Hmm. I think that I think we talk about that a lot with the kids. And I think that's been a gift that I certainly and I know I'm borrowing from someone else. When, um, when I say that when your kids do look at you and say that's not fair, or that's too hard, or why is it so hard? I mean, my answer is, no, life is not fair. If I tried to teach you that life was fair, I'd be a terrible parent. If I tried to you that, you know, you're not you're going to be you're gonna learn something and just know it or or that, um, that, that life isn't hard. Being human is hard. Again, for all the things we just said, you can be trying your very, very hardest and still really, really, really hurt people um, or, do, or do the wrong thing. The wrong thing. Um, I, I think that um, in professions where um, it might be even more acute, like how, because, it's, because on some level it's a little more personal because you're sort of, you know, a one- a one, it's all on you, whether or not you have a job. <laughs> like, there's, no, there's no other person to blame. <laughs> um, that is hard. And I think ultimately what helps the most is if you are absolutely in it for the right reasons. Mm. And if you deeply believe in your talent, um, if you always stay curious and that you're around people who cultivate curiosity and you're always trying to be and do better, um, and when, you know, when you're actually in the job that you switch gears completely from being, you know, a one, a one, a one woman show, one man show to being a real team player and be someone who can show up every day and trust the people you're working with and, uh, that you're creating community with and know that you have their back and that in, um, and that they have yours. And when you have that, you get the magic and in the I feel that when what I do, um, when that magic happens, there's no greater warmth from no greater sunshine. You know, it's just, it's, it feels like all the good, all the yummy, all the, all the things that you will wait as long as you have to for. So um, that's the part that certainly helps me um, stay resilient or um, stay invested and um, that I'm really grateful for. Wow, so similar to everything that you said previously. So I guess it's kind of the same mindset and tactics you use in, in parenthood and in marriage and about relationships and the importance of just 
showing up and transitioning from a one woman show to a team player. So lots of parallels there. And I just also this, I, you must have this deep understanding that what you're doing is so much bigger than just you. I mean, just the fact that there are thousands of people watching this live who most likely have been really impacted by your role on Grey's Anatomy. So it's just, it's so much bigger, the cultural movement that you were able to, you know, be a part of because of what you did on that show. It's, it's really beyond phenomenal. So I'm so grateful for, I mean, I, I, I would never have known when I first started. Um, and I'm just, and I'm still wowed by it. And I'm so grateful um, to uh, have occupied that space and to be, to have been a part of it. And uh, for all the stories that I get to hear and all the connections I make with people that are um, so interested and um, that I find very interesting. And so, um, I mean, I love being able to, to be available for something like this. Did it hit you at any point? Like, wow, I'm the first openly gay character on national television like did it ever hit you or strike you that what you were doing is impacting so many people's lives outside of the show it it hit me before I mean it hit me as soon as I knew I mean it was because it was not happening and so because it felt like um which now which now it, it really is so interesting because think about it it's um I guess I started 13 or 14 years ago and that I mean I guess it's a long time but it's not like forever and for it to have been the only one and now it's like that's I mean it's it's it's, it's amazing I mean it's so incredible and I'm just, again just so grateful that you know, that's that's, ground. that's being a true pioneer in your field so thank you for that um, I, um, that was a partnership and that was, you know, that was, there was, there was so much teamwork involved in that. Um, but I feel very, 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 um, happy. And I feel like probably on a personal note, when it hit me the most was when, um, because again, this sounds like crazy because it doesn't feel like that long ago, but you know, when Twitter was starting and then Instagram was starting and you had real connectivity and really hearing from people. Yeah. And, and uh, again, I was so grateful to be able to connect with people and hear from people. Um, and so the stories that I would be sent or the connections that would get made or the things I would hear um, were so, so incredible. That was the, that was the beginning of me understanding that I wasn't just, you know, going to work and sitting in hair and makeup and putting on my doctor coat and you know, playing. I, I realized that it actually meant, it meant more than just, you know. I mean, you're a true reflection of a cultural shift. Yep. An acceptance and a, 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 a people really grabbing hold and, and maintaining and upholding a, a belief system that they were able to now bring to the world. I mean, it was, your character was very, very transformative in a lot of ways. I, I'm, again, I it's mean, cool. from Shonda's cool. mind to, to yeah. the page very and all cool. the writers that were there. And I think that the thing that, yeah. again, was, you know, that I'm so grateful for and that um, that we all conspired together to, to put the magic, the magic fairy dust in the character that I got to play was that um, she also lived all the things we just said. You know, she, there, was, there was no apology. There was... Yeah. There was no like, okay, well, I'm going to play this person this way because of this thing or this sexuality or this, you know, uh, understanding of myself. It's just, there was just a person. <laughs> yeah. Which is a true expression and, you know, reflection of the community that was so hidden for so long in media. So I just love that you were able to put so much aspiration into something that was taboo. And there's a lot of parallels too with Christopher and what you've done with you know, the safer chemicals conversation and also now with CBD is just elevating a topic that was once considered taboo and stigmatized and misunderstood. So there's a lot of parallel there, but it's also, it's so important because everyone just needs a role model. Everyone just needs another type of identity to aspire to be, to know it's okay. So. Yeah, it's, well, it's giving it a voice and being, I, I feel like I've done this throughout my career is, is 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 yes i'm i'm part of a collective and a large movement yes. part of early days in some respects but like part of a large movement of many many people believing and considering and and doing it for the right reasons 
and happen to be a, a very fortunate messenger taking my skills and my attributes and access and all of the things that I'm blessed to have and really deeply applying it. And I think that's all we all can do is what are you, what are you individually or uniquely capable of that no one else is capable of doing and doing that with a lot of passion and a lot of belief and going very, very, um, going forward with strength and dignity and integrity. And I think that that is a beautiful thing. It's also not thinking that, I mean, we just talked about, you know, you know, occupying two positions, you know, in our professions that feel sort of like larger than life because, you know, just, I don't know, the public nature of it. But I also think that there's something to be said for, I, I think I used to think that there were small jobs, you know, jobs that any, like, you know, when I was waitressing when I was younger, like anybody can waitress. I don't think that's true anymore. I think that what you bring to everything means so much. And you can be pouring a cup of coffee and be terrible at life, it. Yeah. <laughs> or you can be, and but you can have, you know, been kind or lit someone up in a different way or made a connection. And it absolutely made a difference. So, yeah. you know, that's where I think that that it, it, it then goes straight to the heart of belonging and um, relationship and how it keeps us alive and why, you know, the results of the pandemic were so tough, especially for people who were alone. Um, and because, you know, we're human beings and we need, we're, you know, we're hardwired for connection and, and belonging. And I'm a giant Renee Brown fan. So I just said lots of things she says. I would never, ever say they were mine. So much shared is is a reflection of Brene Brown too, even just sitting with your children's feelings instead of telling them they need to feel better immediately, you know, all of those things are come to life with you too. And I also think that one thing that's really special, even in what you just shared was just the idea that we're living for our legacy, not our resume. It's like when David Brooks talk about, talks about, you know, the eulogy versus the resume and even pouring a cup of coffee can change someone's day and change their life. And it's just really about how you make people feel. That's what people remember, not what you did, but how you made them feel. And you yeah. both uh, body. People don't remember it. Well, I think, I feel like I heard it in this analogy. It's like, you know, you can be the, the most beautiful woman in the world. You can be the most handsome man in the world. But the truth is, is that people don't remember what you look like. They remember how you make them feel. Or remember your words. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, I think it's so, 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 so important. Um, it is. Yeah. You both I really excel at. And I just, I so appreciate every day, just the way that you both show up. So thank you. Last question. Let's just, and then we'll just go into quickly Prima. But I think this is kind of a fun one. Do you have any spiritual tips on maintaining a healthy lifestyle? Like how does spirituality play into your life? Individually, couple, faith, anything to share there? I'm not trying to gloss over. I deeply believe this. For me, um, spirituality is just believing in something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. However you practice it, whatever you believe in, whatever God, whatever source, whatever. Um, it is it, it, the most powerful part is believing that there is something bigger than me. There is, there is an accountability um, yeah. in the world. There's a cause and effect. And, um, and that, I mean, it's, it's very, it's hard, right? Cause there's a paradox because you, it's, you know, the self love and the self care is, is helping understand your power and stepping into your power and feeling your power and everything else. But there's also, I think the, going back to the balance is knowing that at the same time, we're all, tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces of it all. We're not, there's something way more important happening in all of this. Um, so for me, that's spirituality, but that's my part. That's yeah, my, my, mine is extremely similar in the sense that I believe that uh, very holistically in a Unitarian philosophy. Mm -hmm. Religions aside, there is a, um, a lot of mystery and magic in this university. We're all tiny, 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 mm -hmm. they say, right? And we are, um, some, for some reason, we're here. And that, that, that's what I, I look in, within deep is why am I here? And what am I uniquely equipped to do at this time in mm -hmm. um, in order to improve their life and obviously it will be a 
deeply reflected in mine. I feel like the more I give, the more I get. And I feel like that universal flow is something that always comes back to me in, in beautiful and wonderful ways. And so the yeah. more outflow, the more it mm. inflow. That's almost like purpose is a part of your spirituality. Yes. Yeah, I remember, um, I remember when I was younger and I was going through a really like that adolescent, just everything seemed wrong and bad and I was wrong and bad and terrible and all the stuff um, that I had a friend who pulled me into a, um, a youth group and uh, it was at a church. And so there was a lot of spirituality talk. And I remember there was a lot of community service. And I kept thinking like, oh, I have a community service. And I realized that all the community service trips were the most important piece of it, of my spirituality, my practice, which was the more that I did for others was actually weirdly selfish because it was the more that I did, the more I felt better about myself. Mm -hmm. And it got me out of myself or my problems and, and mm -hmm. what I thought my problems were. Um, and it was so heartening and so um, fortifying to be in that. So that, I think that was probably my first real world uh, application of that without completely understanding it, you know, in those ways. Logically, that's been proven that when you give and when you volunteer, doesn't your serotonin go up? Like, doesn't your body respond to that? So biologically, we're programmed to be in service. <laughs> um, in fact, Prima next week is going to do a whole... Like, Volunteer day! We have a whole service day. Exactly. It'll be so great. Last question. You're stranded on a desert island. What's the one Prima product you must bring? Oh, wow. Um, or you can do one per category if you just can't. Of course it's the daily. I'm stranded on a desert island. Uh -huh. Or it's or is it sleep tight? You know, you got to get a good sleep if you're on a desert island. But it's funny because I, I went back to my days of being interviewed by like, you know, big beauty brands and stuff like that. And of course, people would ask that and my mind instantly went, eyelash curler. Ah, uh, but it's like, oh, that's the one product I'll need when no one's seeing me. <laughs> Eyelash curler and bring you my my daily. I think today 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 I'm gonna bring um because it's the largest of size I'm gonna bring the Beyond Body Oil because that will last the longest. Uh, that's really smart. No, you're because it's sold out, so you better you better you all you can. Done. Oh my gosh, you're gonna get burned and yeah. sand. Like make it fun and do massages and you know lay in the sun. Fine. So versatile. So um, yeah, take care of it. But you know, it's sold out, so no one can get it yet. But it'll be back soon. Um, this has been so fun and special and sacred. I'm so grateful for your time. I'm sure your kids are running around. Yes. Then, Don't oh. we have to make an announcement on and, our oh, Yes, we are gonna announce the giveaway winner. So hopefully, hopefully she's on the on the live, but we ran Jessica randomly selected. Haley Greco. Haley Greco. Greco artwork. Beautiful. You are of our giveaway. Congratulations. You get the full Prima line, which is huge, and all of Jessica's favorite products. So we'll DM you for that. Um, and this was just so lovely. Thank you so much, you two. I feel like this was a, a glimpse inside the human side of you that we don't get to see on the big screen. So. I'm in the office. Look at, look at me. I know. Look, you're part of the Prima team now, basically. <laughs> We're rolling to the next Zoom. What's the roll? Yeah. Thank uh, you so, so much. Again, such a nice chat. And we're so grateful for both of you. And for everyone for who stuck around and listened. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And follow along Prima. If you want to try any of the products we spoke about, our website is prima.co. That's C-O, not com. And if you use the discount code Jessica20 at checkout, you get 20% off anything. So definitely try us, follow us. Um, it's not the whole reason why Jessica skin is totally perfect, but it's definitely a part of it. So the whole reason. It's the whole reason. Yeah. <laughs> and why she's so happy. It's not Christopher, it's the <laughs>